I'm blessed to be here. It's good to see you guys. You know, I wanted to acknowledge how difficult it's been for all of us, but just looking at you guys in the media, how difficult it's been for you this past year with COVID and just your want and need to do your job. And I think about the relationship maybe with me where it's like, who is this guy, right? We can't talk to this guy. I don't know what this guy's about. So I wanted to say that I recognize that. And uh, I appreciate your guys' efforts. I know we've got our, administ our, our administrators here. I appreciate them for everything that they've, uh, they've uh, done for me and our team in really hard times. You know, our doctors and our trainers, there's so much work put into to us and this to get us to this point. And so I acknowledge that and I'm really appreciative of it. I think the last time you guys had a media, a media days, there's, you know, a um, fair amount has happened, right? The name, image, likeness, social injustice, right? The uh, emergence of, of mental health and the importance of it. It's part of my daily conversations now. Um, and so um, I'm blessed to be here. I'm fortunate to represent Baylor. Wendell Barnhouse from the press break. Uh, as a first season as a coach, there's always challenges, but obviously last year was different than anything anybody's experienced. As you've had perspective to look back on it, what was really you know, the challenges for you as a first year coach dealing with COVID and you know, trying to connect with your team? I appreciate that question. I think there's a lot that you learn about yourself, a lot that you learn about um, your team, you, the focus on mental health, the focus on things outside of football, but yet doing that, being separated, doing that from a place where you're apart and you can't get close and you can't have that connection. I think um, those two things are at odds with each other. And so I think that really kind of sums up the time. And I, you know, for me, the constant effort, the really being unyielding and trying to make that connection, I think is everything. I think it gave us the opportunity in January to move forward and to build to where we are right now. But uh, definitely trying, definitely frustrating, definitely um, revealing. We've got a question on the outside right, and then we'll move into the inside. John Warner, Waco Tribune Hero. Hi, Dave. Um, obviously, the quarterback situation uh, maybe could go down to the last week of the preseason. Can you maybe just talk about that battle and uh, what you like about each of the guys? Appreciate the question. You know, quarterback-wise, um, excited for that competition. I think it's been, you know, it's been ongoing here even through um, through this off season, right at the end of spring. So there's been um, um, work done individually by both uh, Blake and Gary and Jacob, really working hard um, with uh, Coach Sean Bell. And so I think Sean's done an outstanding job of really building those guys up, whatever level they're at, meeting them at that level, and then you know building them up as they go. I think collectively being real honest and transparent about where things are at, and uh, you know not playing any games with it. I think um, you know for us as an offense, the ability to build an offense that has a strong identity and can run the ball and play action pass and have movement passes is really important, but then leaving enough room to where if it's, if it's a certain type of quarterback, right, um, that we can feature that quarterback and make the offense about him. And these are plays that really feature this guy. And so to, to be able to leave that aside for who this quarterback's gonna be. And so I think all of those things are kind of in, are happening right now. I think uh, you look at Blake and like his continued um, understanding of, of the offense and the language and just feeling comfortable, his ability to respond um, when there's adversity and things aren't going right and to, um, to attack that next play with confidence and vigor, I think is, is really important for him. I think with, uh, with, with Jacob is to increase his accuracy with the long ball 
and to increase his leadership with the team, his voice and his assertiveness. I think, um, you know, uh, with Gary, it's going to be the drop back pass, drop back passing game, the quick rhythm passing game, right? Uh, things where he has to build to, to make reads and go one to two to three and get the ball off on time. And so I think, you know, all of those guys, I mean, each, each one has their own individual thing they're working on. But uh, I appreciate them because they, they, they're, they fully understand it. They know where they're at. They know what they got to work on. I think the team is energized by their competition and their ability to pull for each other and their love for one another. We're, we're going to be better for it. On the aisle, about three quarters of the way back on the left-hand side. Hey, Coach. Curtis Quillen, KCEN Channel 6 in Waco. Your first year, you didn't have a normal offseason. How different is it going into this fall actually being able to have a spring practice and a real fall camp? It's different. I think the, you know, the ability to have the, the, the side conversations, the ability to have the one-on-ones to when, um, you know, our players are eating their meals and for me to, to step in there and sit down with them and talk about their families, talk about their life, talk about their classes, talk about uh, what they're going through. Those are... Th those times propel the times that you're on the grass, propel the, the football piece. When you really recognize and see people and uh, give them time to be heard, uh, that makes the football stuff go. And so having the time to do that and the ability to do that uh, has made a big difference. We've got a question on the left-hand side and then we'll get over to the right-hand side. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Dave, um, I noticed from the two deep that was released, I think you had like 10 oars on the first on the uh, offensive side. Is that a statement of competition or is that, you know, guys not stepping up? And then how much did it help to have guys like Grant and, and Jacob come in to help that offensive line depth? Appreciate the question. You know, the, the uh, um, summer workouts that we had, and so seeing the guys uh, being out there for, um, you know, individual uh, position specific conditioning and seeing those guys, you know, drill on their own, just seeing the numbers of our O-linemen, right? During the fall, that was our O-line and D-line combined, right? That number that was out there is like, whoa. And so um, that has uh, really led to great competition. And I think that was sorely, uh, sorely missed last fall, sorely missed. And so the ability to push, push each other, to be held accountable by, uh, by your teammates, I think really is, um, is everything in terms of uh, the on the grass part of it. And then I think that our two, our two transfers both bring um, an intelligence, a maturity, um, a level of effort that is very high corresponds with their level of care. Uh, very impressed by both. Got a question on the outside right. Bryce Cherry, Waco Trib. Uh, Dave, uh, Terrell Bernard was playing at an All-American level when the uh, injury arose last year. Uh, I see he's here with you today uh, looking resplendent in his green suit. Uh, do you expect him to uh, pick up kind of where he left off last year? How did he, his rehab go? I'm a big fan of Terrell. I think he's, Terrell's got a great heart. He's, his, um, his care for others, there's a selflessness about him that uh, our team sees and recognizes. And, uh, you know, he pushes people to be better by the way that, that he goes about his day. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thankful for, um, for Terrell coming back. You know, there, it, was a, it was a choice that he made and um, we're all better for it. I'm a better coach because of it. I think Terrell going into this season, his ability to really understand uh, defensively um, our 
to, to the depth of that simple can be sophisticated, I think is going to be really key for Terrell. You know, there's times where, there's games where Terrell had double uh, uh, digits and tackles, and his understanding of the defense, while great and probably the best on our, on our defense, was still at a level with, uh, that could, you know, much to be desired. And so I think his full understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it and where his help is, I think uh, the sky's the limit for him. We had a question on the middle, about three quarters of the way back. You got that. You're right. Hey, Ryan Chapman with SI Sooners. Dave, last year, end of the year, you guys went down to Norman, put in probably your best defensive performance of the season. What did that show you for the foundation you built on defense in year one and how good that unit could be for you guys this year? Appreciate that. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of pride on defense. We've got we've got guys on that side of the ball um, that um, you know recognize what great play is and um, have an ownership of that and um, and uh, really work hard to elevate that and that it, it's uh, it's personal to them and so. I appreciate that, and you know, I think it came out that night particularly. I think um, the the ability that per that night, you know, I think one of the things with playing OU is that um, they're so multiple, and they're, they they uh, can the game can go in so many different directions. And I think you know, coach is such a uh, adept play caller, and. Um, you know, is this kind of where the game's going? Is he just setting me up here, right? Um, is this because this is what's really happening, or is this because uh, this is a a, a, a a ploy to try to get me to, to move uh, where I don't want to move? All those things go in your head when you're calling against him. And so I think to combat some of that, right, to, to be really sound, to be simple, to take great ownership of alignment and technique, I think um, is a uh, is a big ask. But I think that's the way to do it, and um, we're trying to build off of that game particularly, just in terms of the the base and the structure of the defense. And then um, you know, if we can get a fastball, or if we're if we if we take this to a pitching metaphor, if if I can get my fastball. Um, in the high 90s, right, then my changeup or my curve is that much more better. And so I think uh, doing simple better really, really came in that game. Question on the left side about a quarter way back. Hey, Coach, Sean Gerard, Dave Campbell, Stex Football, how are you doing? Um, you know, when you make an offensive change and a, a stylistic change, how do you balance both matching what you do well already versus aspiring to kind of what you want to do. Appreciate that. I think, um, you know, the changes are hard. And, um, you know, it. your question kind of takes me back to that time in December when you had to make the change. And it was just very, um, it's, a part of the, it's a part of this job that um, I particularly don't like. And uh, that, it, it's a part of the job I'm, I'm uncomfortable with. And I just felt like, um, you know, I feel like knowing the team, having gone through the season, and knowing who the people are behind the players, um, and knowing kind of the, um, the history of, of, of our offense and what it's been prior and how things were, were, were done prior just gives you great insight in terms of where you want to go. And I think the, the wide zone offense, the play action pass, the shot plays, I think those are all things that allow our guys to take great ownership, play fast, be aggressive. Um, and those are things that we are in, uh, in need for. And so uh, I hope that answers your question. We got a question on the right side, third the row back, right in the center. Uh, Cole Thompson, LonghornsCountry.com. Dave, you were at LSU that is known as DBU, but for you, you have a veteran defensive back group coming back. What have you seen from guys like JT and uh, Jaden, and what do you expect for the younger guys like AJ and what you've seen in camp and how they've really stepped up in their role with the full offseason? Appreciate that. It's great flexibility with that group. 
uh, and a great, um, a great football IQ, a great care factor. The guys are, are, um, are into football, studying it, right? Watching um, some of those LSU greats, um, uh, making cut-ups of NFL uh, players that they, uh, that they like. Um, really honing in to um, spring and our calls and um, scrimmages and games and what we could have done better and what we can improve on. Uh, those guys are, are into football. And I think when you have that and then you have an, an athleticism and a flexibility of someone that can play high, someone that can play man to man on a slot, someone that can play the half, right, and ball hawk, uh, someone that can blitz off the perimeter, someone that can set edges when, the, when there's a run coming your way, I think that gives you uh, a lot of options. And so very excited about our secondary. I think, you know, our young guys bring um, a real energy and a real, um, re uh, a real level of athleticism that I think can take us even to a higher level. I, I'm, I've got uh, big expectations our secondary group. This is going to be the last question. We only have one minute on the aisle, right side. Coach, Pete Mundo, Heartland College Sports. I uh, want to ask you right, right in front here. Um, you spend time, of course, in the Big Ten, the SEC, now the Big 12. The perception around the Big 12 not playing defense, a lot of that went out the window last year in traditional and also uh, advanced metrics. What do you think about the defense in this league? where it's been and where it can go, not just on the field, but also recruiting some of the guys you got to play in the SEC, now bring them to this conference. It's a great question. Um, I, see, I see this being a defensive conference. And I think it, it you know, I give, I look at Coach Patterson and what he's done. Um, you know, he's been playing defense in this conference for quite a long time. I look at uh, OU and their success on defense and their commitment to defense. I look at Iowa State and um, their, uh, you know, the work that they did and the uh, courage that they had to be different and to do what fit, uh, fit the league. But I think the league offensively is changing, coming from a 10 personnel spread look to more of a 12 personnel, one back, two tight end look. There's going to be even there's going to be more one back three tight ends. You know the league is looking more like the Big Ten than um, the ten personnel spread sets that used to be. You know uh, my friend um, you know Matt is here today and I know that uh, their offense is probably one of the few that's that's spread like that. You know, and so I think the the ability for defense. Um, to set edges, to be disruptive in the interior. You know, if you, get, if you get a tackle for loss, if you get a sack, if you get any form of a negative play, if you're stemming, right, and the offense jumps, and any, any, any way that the offense has to move back, right, that percentage or that percentage that offense has, has the chance to score goes way down. And so creating negative plays is really where it's at on defense. And I think, um, you know, there's a fair amount of people now that are, that are really interested in getting in the backfield. I think the, the, uh, the answer to that on offense is going to be more, like we talked about, 12 personnel, 13 personnel looks where you're trying to um, absorb all of the interior blitzes and stunts and everything. Right, as opposed to doubling certain people and someone singled, nope, you know, he just whiffed on the guy and now it's, you know, second 15, right? So getting it where it's more just wide zone and you're picking stuff up and knocking them off. And the same with, with play action pass. The, the more you can run, uh, run the ball, the more you can play action pass off of it, right? And hold people accountable as opposed to being spread sets where now there's pressures and stunts coming from different areas, so. It's a good question. I think the, the, league, the league has changed. I think it's going to change even more. Okay, Coach, thank you very much for your comments and your answers, and best of luck for the season. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Thank